What's up everybody, 915Man here hanging out with you guys today. I wanted to show you guys some of the biggest hassle of moving. I knew this was going to suck. Uh, I've done it, you know, a couple of times now, breaking down tanks, setting up tanks. Um, I did it when I had the 120 and then I upgraded up to the 150. This is a 150 SCA aquarium with the wooden stand uh, dimensions. There's like... Five feet by 20 inches deep by 20 something inches tall and I'm gonna show you some of the things that have made it a little bit easier were these dollies and of course those brute containers with the wheels um, it was a mess man I'm telling you right now I knew it was gonna suck but at the end it was worth it um, these were the lights and I'm still rocking these lights the t5 aquatic LEDs with the Reef Breeder 50 inch. Um, lights have been good, worked great. And another thing that I picked up, I picked up these uh, Tough Stuff uh, 50 gallon each tub uh, because the last time when I broke down my tank and when I moved into the SCA 150 aquarium that you just saw, I killed almost all my fish because. I had them sitting in a uh, brute container, that garbage can, and uh, so this time I wanted to keep the water flowing. I had the heaters and everything up going so it would be a little bit easier and uh, it worked out pretty well because I didn't have any fish loss. So I did have quite a bit of help as you can see. I had Matt, this is his truck, brand new GMC Diesel Denali. Uh, came all the way out here to help me out and we use these dollies I thought it was gonna be a lot harder to move the tank but with four people this tank was easy two people we could have did it but it would have, we would have hurt our backs and uh, it definitely would have sucked now since uh, I broke down this tank I bought some new bulkheads I bought some quality bulkheads which I highly recommend um, because if you're gonna do it might as well replace the bulkheads and uh, these are slip uh, and from the top and then they're slip on the bottom so one inch also uh, some of the th <laughs> these things were sticking out I was careful when I was draining it and I cleaned out my o overflow a little bit and as you can see it's a mess um, I wanted this tank transfer to be as quick as possible because I didn't want uh, any fish loss like I did the, the last time still felt bad about it and this time it did go quite a bit uh, smoother this was also one of the last things to move in my house I had a game plan I said all right I'm gonna move all the furniture first and then we'll do the fish tank for last um, I'll drain the fish tank and that way I can get rid of as much water or save as much water as possible because I did reuse a lot of the water but I knew that I would also be losing some of the water um, so I you know started making like RODI water and you know it's Murphy's law you have a plan but things don't always go to plan something al is always going to happen here and uh, that things that you can't really account for so you can kind of plan for things but just have a backup plan I did as much as possible so that way when my buddies came to help me out um, that would be one less thing that we would have to do. When they showed up to help me I had the tank already drained, I had the corals in the tub so all we had to do was the big stuff like move the, the tank and then pit the tank where I wanted it and then I came back and I you know transported everything to my house uh, by myself. Like I said Murphy's Law guys. This is one of the containers that I had and as you can see it sprung a leak. Um, the good thing is that it happened in the garage. I had moved almost everything out of the garage as you can see and water was just leaking from the bed. Uh, once I found the source of the leaky trash can I tried to save as much of as possible with another brute container trash can and uh, it worked okay. So I did lose about you know quite a bit of water about maybe at least 20 gallons down the drain that I could have reused but 
Hey, it happens. That's what I was talking about. Have a game plan and then be able to think about it and react quickly. One quick pro tip that I would highly recommend is you label all your plugs. You know, for example, if you have a plug that's for your auto top off, write on that plug auto top off ATO. Um, I had so many plugs and wires everywhere that uh, without writing them on them, it was a pain in the butt. As you can see, you can never really have enough buckets. Pick them up here and there. Now I had to make quite a bit of salt because I didn't have enough salt. I didn't have enough RLDI water. As it was being made, I was mixing it up. I'm using the pump that came with my protein skimmer to mix some salt because I couldn't find any pumps anywhere. I had such a mess uh, from moving and uh, one of the great things. So. Let me tell you about these little tubs containers. I got them from Tractor Supply. They had bigger kinds. And uh, these were the most cheapest that I could find uh, because I had a 100 gallon that I would borrow from my buddy Albert. And I saw these and I was like, man, I'm gonna get 250 gallons. So that way it'll give me a little bit more purpose, uh, flexibility, and man, they worked out great. A lot better. I can say that I didn't lose any fish I did, you know, have a mess, but I kind of sorted it out. These containers right here, uh, as you can see, I labeled them 5, 10, 15, 20 for water changes. Been a lot of help, and you need to go ahead and get some wheels that they sell them at, like Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby, but Home Depot and Lowe's. They sell those things, but go ahead and pick up the wheels when you can, because the wheels are a little bit more expensive. Um, this was the mess. I wasn't too much in a hurry um, for the move. That's about how much water I was really short, um, even from transferring them from 250 gallons and uh, moving them into the tank. But my main concern was having enough water so that the fish could swim around, at least be in there. When I was draining the 150 tank, I had uh, sand in the other tank. So in this tank, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have it bare bottom. I'm going to get rid of all that sand and I'm going to just throw it away. Um, but I decided I'm going to do a different direction. I'm still going to use the live sand in this tank. And the only place that I'm going to have live sand is I'll probably have like a cup for like a wrasse because the uh, wrasse fish like to sleep in the sand bed. But I bought some live sand. I'm going to keep it in the sun. My reason for doing so is I want to have less rock in the display, but I want to also keep be able to support uh, the uh, live bacteria that you need. So I put as much rock as I could, even in the protein skimmer section. I'm going to put it in the sump section. And uh, so I, that way I can have more room in my tank and not have so much rock. You gotta make the most out of your slump area. It's really high uh, real estate value right there down in the sump. You have all your equipment. So you might as well have it work for you. I'm gonna plan on uh, using this live sand and then I'm gonna add some pond matrix in here because it's a little bit cheaper. I bought the one gallon pond matrix on Amazon and I'll be putting that directly on top of this 20 pounds of live sand. I wanted to show you the plumbing I just made it really really simple here I just connected it and uh, got rid of the algae turf scrubber I still have it I may add it online a little bit later on it worked great but for right now I just took it out that is the pond matrix before I even added it to the system I rinsed it out real good before even the move and uh, it's supposed to be really good lots of places uh, for the uh, beneficial bacteria to live and uh, I decided to do that because I got rid of quite a bit of live rock that I already had in the system because I wanted to change up my tank and do something a little bit different. Also some of my rock had a bunch of Mohano anemone pest anemones on there so I instead of trying to you know take off the pest anemones I just said you know what I'm gonna dry this rock out if I need it again I'll use it later on I'll clean it up but uh, that's also part of the reason that I got rid of some of the rock 
and so that I can organize it because I was just dumping corals in here trying to keep them alive and uh, I think for the most part it was okay this was like a organized chaos it was a mess definitely was a mess but you know part of the moving and and not my first tank move but definitely sucks moving tanks I can say that the rock that I didn't want I threw it in the sump and then I also picked up a bottle of that Fritz 9 it's a beneficial bacteria kind of uh, like a Tim's one and only but a little bit cheaper and I was able to pick it up I bought this stuff on Amazon the biggest bottle that I can buy I just dumped it and uh, kind of give the tank a little bit of a boost here I don't know what you guys use uh, stuff worked pretty good like I said and uh, I might recharge my tank up a little bit later and as you can see the tank was a mess um, but look at the sand bed look at the corals I just had everything everywhere such a big mess here but uh, it's part of you know how I did it my main concern was also the fish I didn't want to lose any fish and uh, they're out and swimming you know they were hiding uh, because there was like really no room for them to swim um, because I didn't have enough water saved up this is what I picked up the Seachem matrix uh, like I said it was pretty cheap it was affordable I bought the one pound um, I probably could have bought two pounds but in the same chamber what I'm gonna do is use it for Chato so I have uh, the the live sand then I have this this stuff on top and then I added the uh, Fritz 9 beneficial bacteria so I was trying to give it a boost I let it sit there I, I seeded the tank and uh, so far you know it's been working out pretty good um, the reason I added this is because I took out quite a bit of live rock and this is right here doing the job as you can see it kind of cleared up I'm not disturbing it or anything like that so it's gonna be sand the pond matrix and then on top of that later on I'm gonna add the uh, Chato now I want you to take a look at my sump area off to the left is where my drain comes out you can see it's not gushing it's not like a waterfall it's a slow trickle it's working it has contact time with the protein skimmer and it's gonna go over to the next baffle and uh, be my my beneficial bacteria with the chato and I also changed out my skimmer so we'll do another video about that one later on but uh, everything is okay it's still a, a big mess when I started you can see I have corals everywhere um, I accidentally fragged the frog spawn euphilia right there in the middle I have that stuff all over I had DG all over frag racks all over it was just a big mess but fish are doing good everything else was is fine and then I slowly started to organize it little by little I was like okay I'm gonna do this for a little bit I'm gonna take this rock out I'm gonna move all the philia to this corner and at this point there was no water changes on this tank this was probably like a good size water change because adding fresh water and fresh salt to the tank um, because when I moved uh, I had everything in storage I had all my salt buckets that I had saved up I had all my carbon I wasn't dosing my tank uh, because I didn't think it was gonna last this long uh, I was several months over the uh, what they stated we'd be ready they said we'd be done by July and we actually didn't move until October so the tank was neglected quite a bit and uh, I'm glad everything is settled in now back to normal so I can show you but I wanted to show you guys you know just how much of a mess it was and pain in the butt you know some of these nice SPS corals that I had you can see they died um, they started bleaching and I spent quite a bit of money on them uh, so that's why I had quite a bit of losses I have been trying to bounce back some of these SPS I have been trying to bounce back some of these SPS if I see some of them are alive or something then I go ahead and I try to take care of it and nurse it back but for the most part guys a lot of this stuff I lost 
and uh, it really really sucks because in the last couple of videos that I showed you you saw, saw my tank and how well everything was all the colors everything was going good and it's a lot different right now had such a mess but I'm glad it's it's over on my planning back to my planning I had bought a 40 gallon breeder I had picked up a great deal on it it was a 40 gallon breeder it came with the stand and the original plan was I'm gonna go set that tank up I'm gonna have lighting I'm gonna have flow I'm gonna have everything that I need and I'm gonna be moving these frags little by little not all at once you know within a couple of days breaking down an established tank um, but that never happened and uh, you know that 40 gallon breeder that I, I bought for that my son took that over and it's now his uh, bearded bearded dragon uh, tank where for his uh, lizard it was pretty sad having to break down my other tank it was already set up everything was going good you know colors were popping everything was going growth was good but as you can see right there on the that uh, overflow that's where I had so much uh, life and SPS happening um, and I pretty much had to break it off that uh, reef welder that I was using to hold my SPS were great didn't want to come off at all and uh, here's the pieces purple stylo all over the place from uh, the mother colony some of them broke um, I tried not to break anything but you know things just broke and it's part of that Murphy's law look at that thing I got it from a little frag and it, it grew real big also the uh, green slimer pieces all over the place and enemies weren't happy and off on the rock to the right is the Mahano Island I had all kinds of uh, Mahano pest up uh, right there which I still do have in the in the tank just I try to get rid of most of them I still have my Mohano Aptasia wand I do not recommend that wand for Aptasia really didn't work too well on them because it just seemed like they multiplied I don't know if that wand is gonna work good on the Mohanos but I might give it a try a little bit later I don't know what will eat those things or if you if you guys know drop it in the comments let me know would love to go ahead and get rid of those things they're ugly and they take over the tank so some of these frag discs that I have I glued some of the nice pieces of Zoas and stuff because I knew I was gonna lose a whole bunch of stuff so I try to make it a little bit easier by gluing them on discs um, and it did help a little bit but you know things still broke and man it was just such a mess because everything right here was done individually and as you can see lots of pieces broke but if you want to send your boy some corals hit me up let me know I'll gladly accept some SPS uh, I was looking for some red planet and some of those other pieces uh, really sad I was looking at my video I was like man those things were doing really well but you know had to break it down in order to move appreciate you guys hanging out hope you guys have a good one make sure you like subscribe share this video with your peoples and uh, let's help this uh, video grow i can't wait to show you where the tank is now and uh it's a lot different from from this mess that i just showed you have a good one guys like subscribe and you guys take care